Hello everyone, my name is Arthur Hayes. I'm the CIO of Maelstrom, my family office. I am the co-founder of BitMEX and former CEO. We're most famous for inventing the perpetual swap. I'm really happy to tune in virtually to speak with everyone today and I want to congratulate Block Media on its success organizing this conference. So obviously I'm not in Korea, but I don't really do many virtual, I guess recording if you want to call it. I believe that the, that the Korean market is the most important trading market for crypto. If you take a look at the per capita amount that you guys trade on average, it's higher than anywhere else in the world. And so I want to address everyone and answer some questions that have been given to speak about my views on the market and some other things that are going on in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. So obviously the first thing that people are interested in is what's my price prediction for Bitcoin. So I've been on record many times saying that I think Bitcoin will end the year around 100,000. Obviously, we're co close to that mark. Then the next question is, where do I think Bitcoin is going to be, you know, three, four five years down the road? As I'll get into in a bit, I believe that the secular trend is for more money printing globally. That's not going to stop. And as such, my Bitcoin $1 million price prediction, I believe, can happen within the next five years. And so, again, what are the key factors driving this confidence that I have in the continuation of the bull market? It centers on money printing. At the end of the day, the largest economic blocks in countries, United States, China, Japan, the European Union, and just about every other country around the world, including South Korea, is printing money. They have different goals and, I don't know, policies that they want to afford, but they can't afford with taxes. It'll piss people off, and so they're printing money. And this is a trend that went into overdrive started in 2008 when uh, Satoshi obviously came up with the Bitcoin white paper and the Genesis block was in 2009. I don't believe that's a coincidence that the birth of Bitcoin and this cryptocurrency ecosystem coincided with one of the largest financial crises since the 1930s. And so that's why I'm very confident that crypto, which predominantly is priced in fiat currencies, can rise. And as we've seen, Bitcoin is the best performing asset in human history. It's from zero in 2009 to, I think, close to $2 trillion of market cap in about 15 years. Now, some of you have seen me on Twitter. Uh, I posted a chart from CNBC and it had the, the Maelstrom Fund and it talked about how many deals that we had done this year and that we, I guess, by their data was one of the most active family offices. And obviously, everything that we do is in crypto. We do early stage token deals. And I responded on Twitter something to the response of uh, crypto is running shit. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, people in this room, people around the world, we have generated the most wealth in the fastest amount of time probably in human history. And we can see how this wealth is manifesting itself around the world if we take a look at the political process. The most salient example that I can think of in recent memory is what happened a few weeks ago in the U.S. presidential election. Some people have come up with data saying that the cryptocurrency lobby uh, was one of the most active and donated the most of any sort of industry lobby to politicians in the United States. And I know that in Korea, there's a very active crypto trading community that also has an effect on politics. And as people get wealthy in a particular industry, they want the policies of the government that is supposed to represent them to further their own economic interests. And that's what crypto is, what is happening in crypto. That's why we're seeing such an explosion of political energy around this ecosystem because we've created so many wealthy people in such a short period of time. I know that a lot of you are very interested in uh, meme coins, especially um, what's going on in the Solano ecosystem. If you've taken a look at the data, uh, pump.fun is probably one of the best performing projects this cycle. If you're not familiar, it's a protocol where anyone with an internet connection can go on and create a meme coin. And they'll help you through the process. Within a few minutes, you've created your meme coin, you can add liquidity to a decentralized exchange like Radium and off to the races and people can start trading this thing. And so I think this is a great way to onboard people who otherwise don't, wouldn't understand the technology or think crypto is too complicated that they can understand meme coin. Oh, that's a funny picture. That's a funny joke. It's now encapsulated in this picture, this video. 
There's memes that are going across the different social media platforms. And I can trade the virality of this particular meme. If I think that someone else is going to believe that this meme is going to attract more attention, they're going to buy this token after me and the price will go up. And so while meme coins are intrinsically worthless, it's very easy to understand, oh, do I think this is popular? Therefore, I should buy it. And we're getting a new class of people into crypto. When you get into meme coins, you learn about decentralized exchanges. You learn about you know, browser-based wallets. You learn how to transfer assets between different parts of the ecosystem. And once you've come away from trading meme coins, maybe you'll go and try something else in the ecosystem that isn't just about trading pictures on the internet. So I'm very positive on meme coins. I think that they are a great addition to you know, our industry. And we need to do more things like this to bring the next billion people into crypto. Another thing that people are super interested in is uh, artificial intelligence, AI. Obviously, if you've taken a look at the NVIDIA market cap and the amazing returns that has generated over the past you know, two years since ChatGPT was announced, everyone is all in on AI. I think everyone believes, and I believe this as well, that AI is going to be one of the most transformative technologies of this era. The question is, how do you make money from it? Now, from a crypto perspective, I've written a few essays about how I think AI agents you know, are actually a new life form, a silicon-based life form, and they need a currency or a monetary system in which to transact. And being a silicon-based life form that's based on code, they're not going to understand our analog legalistic framework for how we've created fiat currencies. They don't have a lawyer to go to court to argue for them with the government. But they understand computer code. They understand that they need to communicate electronically with their other AI counterparts around the world, around the universe, what have you. And so that's why I believe that crypto and especially Bitcoin will be the currency of AIs. And now we're even seeing AIs or large language models being spun up by humans and then let loose into the ether and creating their own meme coins and coming up with trading ideas. And as these models get more sophisticated, as they're trained on more data, they're going to be able to be more autonomous, make more decisions. And they're going to be able to conduct all types of business within a crypto ecosystem. And so the sky's the limit for the kind of value that they're going to create. I don't think we currently know what is going to be the standout app that an AI is going to use. But we do know that AIs are already doing meme coins, for example, like Goatsy. And I think that's only going to continue. We have AIs who are trading based on their own signals. We might have you know, AI financial advisors uh, soon that are trading, you know, giving advice on particular cryptocurrencies. So it's really up to our imagination how we want to use this new life form and how we want to give them their own substrate, that is crypto, in which they can transact with each other and with other humans as well. Um, I know that some of you have seen that I'm quite a big proponent of Aptos. I think that this is the you know, layer one of, of this cycle, as was Solana to the you know, 2021 cycle. I'm very proud of what the team has been able to build. Uh, in the short term that I've known them for about you know, six to nine months, I've been very impressed with the caliber of people uh, at Aptos. And I think that they're trying to create a user experience that is going to bring on the next billion people. Now, they've been able to do that because they use a move-based language, and it's super fast and super cheap. Obviously, being a bit of a latecomer, they also have just launched their own meme coin sort of factory. Obviously, it's a, that's not the protocol launching it. Some other team launched this thing called Emoji.Fun. It's done tens of millions of dollars in, in trading volume in the few days that it's been live. So I do believe that Aptos is a great place for meme coins because it is one of the cheapest ways to transact on chain. And if we get an explosion because some meme is super viral, the Aptos ecosystem, the Aptos blockchain is not going to go down and experience a similar sort of outages that we've seen on Solana when it's been super hot. And, you know, up to 75% of transactions have failed. So I'm super positive on Aptos and the rigorous amount of building that they put into how they're going to create an ecosystem that can handle the volumes that popular meme coins can bring. Uh, being in Korea uh, and making this video, I had to get a bit up to speed on the proposed tax legislation. And I reached out to my various friends in the Korean ecosystem to learn about what's going on with your sort of legislative cycle. And from what I've learned, and again, very high level, is that there is this proposed 
change into how capital gains taxes are going to be treated in Korea, which could, if implemented in the wrong way, lead to a large decline in trading volume, similar to what has happened in Japan when they rolled out their tax rules and you saw trading volumes drop off a cliff. Now, it's uncertain whether this particular proposal will get sort of put into the new tax bill that I guess is going to be voted on within the next few days or next few weeks. But the encouraging thing from what I hear on the ground is that politicians are very scared of angering the pro-crypto crowd. They know there's an election coming up. I believe it's in 2027. They know that the young Korean people are very crypto positive. Uh, and they're going to vote with their wallets. And a politician or a political party that is not aligning with the crypto holders in Korea will suffer at the ballot box. And so while I don't know what's going to happen with this particular tax policy, I do hope that the people in this audience or who listen to this video call up their elected representative and let them know that they would like a pro-crypto policy because they want to be able to earn wealth for themselves and change their lives. And tax policies that sort of restrict the trading volume, decrease the liquidity, are not something that they are in favor of. So I'm very hopeful that the, you, know, you guys in the Korean electorate are able to tell your elected representatives what should be done, and a favorable policy happens at the end of the day. And I also have been learning a little bit more about some of the uh, proposals on how to get more institutional involvement in the Korean ecosystem. As I understand it, right now, at the large exchanges or all the all the Korean-based exchanges, uh, only native individual Koreans can trade. The you know corporates can't enter crypto yet and trade. Now, obviously, given the liquidity that's increasing, the market caps of the cryptos that are going up as well, trading shops, banks, asset managers. Of course, they want to get into this game. They want to charge fees. They want to create products. They want to create derivatives. They want to be able to be relevant to their clients, especially the younger cohort who's going to inherit the wealth of the older generation. And so from what I hear, politicians are listening to that and will hopefully allow institutions in Korea to transact natively on these exchanges and to get involved and create products that will be interesting to the, the retail trading community. So I'm very positive on that. If you've taken a look at what happened in the United States with BlackRock, the launch of the Bitcoin ETFs has been their most successful ETF launch in the history of this firm. And this is the largest asset manager in the world who manages over a trillion dollars of, uh, of assets. And a Bitcoin ETF is their best product out of the gate. So we know that asset managers are probably foaming at the mouth in Korea to be able to launch their own products and replicate the success that Larry Fink and BlackRock have had in the United States. And before I leave you guys, I just wanted to offer sort of a message of encouragement to everyone who's, you know, trading in the trenches in Seoul and, you know, in the locations around Seoul, obviously. It's a long road. You're not going to make wealth changing money immediately. Be patient. Understand that the money printing that started I mean, forever, but really in 2008 in the United States and moved to Europe, moved to China, um, is happening all over the world, is continuing and it's only going to increase. And so while maybe there's some dips in the price of crypto, stay nimble, use an appropriate amount of leverage, but be confident that governments do not want to engage in austerity. They want to inflate away their problems because that's more politically palatable. And so crypto is the beneficiary. Crypto is a smoke alarm that shines a light on the wanton money printing of the establishment and is the thing that is going to represent a growth in value that's going to outstrip any other asset class. And I'm very confident in that. But at the end of the day, crypto is very volatile. So be humble, be patient, and buy the dip. Thank you very much. I hope to see everyone in person in Seoul sometime next year. And I am in love with the Korean crypto community, and I wish you guys a great end of the year. Thank you.